deal. I'm Jaws on the beat, I got flow that kills. Do my thing with a few G's, Lauren Hill. What's up guys, it's Unders and in today's video we're going to look at FL Studio and specifically the mixer and some of the layouts that I personally use and how we can get them and why I find them more useful and whether or not they'll help you out. Just looking at my project here, this is how I tend to have the mixer. So I've got these nice wide channels just here. So when we play back we've got nice big green meters. My pan control at the top, so just at a glance I can see what's panned where just with the same relevant, just with a you know, colour indicator up here. If something's got active plugins then there's just this little switch at the bottom here, it tells me there's active plugins on that channel. Uh, and a plugin list here as well. Now the reason I really like that is instead of having to go to the channel, look here on the right and find the plugin, I can actually just click them at the bottom here. And it opens that plugin straight away for me. I actually just click them here at the bottom and it will just open that plugin straight away for me rather than all the navigation side of things. Just find that way more useful. And I've got this space at the bottom here. So whichever channel I've got selected, it will show any connections I've got going on with this little green bar here. So I'm just going to show you how to set that up and uh, where all the settings are. So what we'll do, we'll default the mixer. All right, so your FL Studio, barring the colors, will probably look something like this. And, uh, you know, you've got your meter and your panning control, everything, and your actual metering at the top. This is set out a little bit more like a traditional mixing desk where you've got like a, a view of the metering at the top. It's just not how I like to work. I also find it all a bit small. And again, if I want to go to a plugin uh, that I want to adjust something, I've got to go to the channel and then pick it up from the side over here. So the way to change it, first off, we're going to go to the little arrow just here, do our nice little drop down. Uh, and we've got a view. There's a few settings I'm going to put on in here. First one is names at top. And that's just going to bring all the names at the top next to the meters like so. I'm going to go into view again. I'm going to do lines between tracks. It doesn't give us anything just yet, but when we change our format, it will. And then we're going to go view. I also want alternative mixer highlighting. I want to just watch really subtle change, but it gives me a nice bright color and number across the top, which I find easier as a quick reference. And I want the compact plugin list on as well. Again, we don't get any change here because we haven't got the wide profile on. So what we've got here where it says wide initially, with this little orange drop down just here. And what we actually want is extra large, boom. And that really stretches everything out, gives us all the ordering, and it gives us that really nice compact plugin list which for me is just a huge workflow change and um, just you know I can just at a glance see at the top what I want it's on this channel it's that plugin there I can just grab it and adjust it rather than lots of messing around my meters are just easier to read and then next to the value so overall of what's playing back And all the connections are highlighted. If you can't see the connections, that's also just hidden away in view just here. You've got routing cables just here. Now, some people do like the waveform view as well, and that changes these so you can actually see the audio coming through. I don't find that as useful. I like to go with the metering option, which is why I have that on. And that, guys, really simply is how and why I set up my mixer like that. I hope that's been helpful for you, and I hope that improves your workflow in FL Studio. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.